name, um, Mayor George Flagg of the city of Vicksburg, and uh, I'm joined here with my colleagues of the Mississippi River City Towns uh, Initiative, and I'm joined here with me also as the co-chair of this uh, organization, and uh, he's Aaron uh, Copeland, the mayor of Vidalia, as well as Matt, uh, Mayor Paxton Branch from uh, Tallulah, uh, uh, the new elect Mayor Eric Simmons from Greenville and Mayor Exxon uh, from uh, Rosedale and uh, Mayor Edward Brown is on his way from so St. Joe, Louisiana. I'm, uh, I'm thankful that all sure. of the mayors along the Mississippi River and this organization has joined us here today. We certainly want to take the opportunity to thank uh, the Corps Engineer, uh, NOAA, FEMA, MEMA, uh, Delta Regional Authority, and all those that have come here uh, today to share in this uh, briefing as relates to um, this 2015-2016 uh, flood. Uh, uh, it started the uh, 1st of January, and I might say that as mayor, I started to say it was my first opportunity, but I'm learning that it's my first challenge uh, to have to respond uh, but I can say this emphatically and unequivocally, had it not been for the collaboration of the Corps Engineer, uh, FEMA, MEMA, uh, the Congressional Delegation led by uh, our own Senator Conference and others, uh, we would not, we would not have been able to respond and make the preparation we made as fast. Uh, we thought that uh, it was going to take us at least about Monday. Uh, to respond to this, but as of yesterday, because of the information that we've gotten from the Corps Engineer, the collaboration we've gotten from the state, uh, the local government, and manage all the emergency management, we was able to conclude yesterday about uh, two o'clock, which included to put up a flood wall uh, along the Mississippi River and sandbag uh, around one of our most historic buildings, uh, the, the depot. Uh, the good news along the way is that, and uh, somebody else would uh, clarify this, but we've been able to start from a 54 uh, uh, feet crest in Vicksburg, and I'm, I'm told that it's going down, but we made all preparation for about 56 uh, uh, feet uh, crest, and uh, starting on uh, Monday, uh, we should start seeing some in the water. Having said that, uh, uh, I'm going to turn it over to the co-chairman of this organization. I might add that this organization has been to Washington, D.C., and in fact, we scheduled to go to Washington, D.C. in March to brief our uh, congressional delegation from Missouri all the way down to uh, the state of Louisiana along the Mississippi River uh, to tell them how vital and how important the Corps Engineer and funding for the Corps Engineer, I should say that while I'm here, uh, increased funding for the Corps Engineer uh, as being a former legislator, I know I'm for an appropriation is uh, because we was able to get the, the president's uh, funding and the congressional funding up last time. We want to be able to continue that. But uh, we do want to share with you this uh, what this devastation that uh, about to occur. Uh, and it looks like uh, from the briefing where you just uh, finished with the Corps Engineer that we can expect um, this to be around uh, at least through April, May, and some other months. And who knows? Because I'm told that from the briefing, this is a historic uh, moment uh, for uh, the water along the Mississippi River and any preparation along the Mississippi River. So uh, having said that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mayor Cope. Thank you, Mayor Flagg. Uh, I want to thank you for hosting this press conference. Uh, it's good to be here in Vicksburg working with the mayors in response to what we're facing. Mayor Flagg is right. I wish they had MRCTI back in 2011 because I sure could have used the association we now have. One aspect that has proven invaluable to this line of communications we've established between mayors as mayors north of us sustain impacts they are relaying valuable insight to us down the river. In talking with the mayors of Alton, Illinois, Cape Girardeau, Missouri, for example, we've been able to learn what challenges they faced, what response worked, what to look out for, we may not otherwise expect. 
and how big a job the cleanup may be. For instance, Mayor Walker of Alton warned us to watch for mudslides, a danger more prevalent in winter events as there's less vegetation to hold the soil and the water is moving faster. Mayor Reddigan of Cape Girardeau, who just experienced an all-time record high level for his city, warned us about the volume of debris they have encountered impacts on roads, bridges, levees, and other mayors are facing could be better addressed if we coordinate with one another, which we're doing at an unprecedented level with MRCTI. Our association has also strengthened and improved our coordination with emergency response and relief agencies, such as the Corps, FEMA, Red Cross, and others. These agencies do a tremendous job, and I want to thank Colonel Michael DeRosa of the Corps of Engineers, Mississippi Valley, Western Division, as well as Major General Michael Weir for our, all their assistance. The Corps is on the ground with us, proven to be invaluable once again. I can attest to that. I've been around probably longer than anyone else, uh, many, many years. Uh, this is my 35th year representing Vidalia. And all those years, starting in 2011 and starting all through those years, never has the Corps of Engineers worked with us as well as they have these years. Uh, and all our projects, uh, as Mayor Flagg said, you cannot thank them enough. And all the agencies that have worked with us, tremendous uh, uh, respect for all of those. And we're looking forward. You know, I, I want to say this. Uh, as I said, this is my 35th year. I'm off the script a little bit. But this is my 35th year. And can you imagine in 2011 a 500-year flood? Then you follow up in 2015 and 16 with another 500-year flood. In five short years, it's almost unheard of. So I'm off the script a little bit, but I'll come back to it. The river is incredibly important to our cities, to our economies, to our quality of life. It provides critical environmental services, such as drinking water, <coughs> generates $400 billion in annual revenue for our region, and directly supports 1.3 million jobs. We find ourselves in a near normal that requires we adapt to increasing fre frequencies of storm events. I don't care if you call it climate change or not or what, this is happening to us now with a whole new level of regularity. As mayors, we have to respond. This brings me to the other valuable aspect of MRCTI, providing a collective voice of mayors on the river. Since 2012, mayors have been working to secure more resources for disaster mitigation. Mayors have been working uh, uh, to, uh, together with uh, members of the Mississippi River Caucus in the U.S. House and Senate such as Senator Blunt of Missouri, Senator, uh, Congressman John Fleming of Louisiana, my congressman. The mayors have realized a three-year goal of renewed funding for the pre-disaster mitigation grant program of $100 million in the spending bill passed by Congress in December. MRCTI mayors will now pursue a coordinated approach to bring much of this grant funding to the region as possible towards building resilience to the Mississippi River Valley. I want to iterate that mitigation will involve many tools at our disposal, including green infrastructure, such as protecting and restoring wetlands. One acre of wetlands, this is an amazing figure that I just saw the day for the first time, one acre of wetlands can hold up to one million gallons of flood water. According to analysis by US EPA across the nation, inland water wetlands provide an estimated $237 billion in water flow regulation service annually. The mayor of Grafton, Illinois, is restoring a wetlands adjacent to the city that is a similar project north of Dubuque, Iowa. Since we're dealing with a new normal over the last couple of years, MRCTI has been building a climate platform which includes, number one, vulnerability assessment, number two, securing of crit critical resources such as the PDM grant. Number three, determining metrics of success. Number four, addressing vulnerabilities. <coughs> Number five, engaging in international transboundary water agreements to learn and teach best practices. I want to now give my fellow mayors a chance to chime in in something they want to add. But in saying that, I want to say this. We're constantly in touch with our congressional delegation who have done a fantastic job. And, and, and uh, for example, Saturday, uh, tomorrow afternoon, my congressman, Congressman Abraham, will be flying to Vidalia to pick me up to fly over the flooded areas that we have in our region. So I want to come back to this. Three and a half years ago, this organization was not here. 
uh, we experienced in 2011 uh, something that we've never experienced before. But in all my years as an elected official, never have I seen these organizations work together as one unified group. Uh, the Colonel said a few moments ago that they have not seen, received very many phone calls. Let me say this to you. In 2011, I want to say that we see, received hundreds of phone calls, hundreds of phone calls. But due to the efforts of the Corps and everyone working together to inform the public of what's taking place, ladies and gentlemen, I received three phone calls. Now, I want you to think about that for a minute. Hundreds, almost thousands in 2011. Thank you, Colonel, and thank you all that represented uh, the uh, different agencies. I also want to say this to you, that uh, uh, our social media in Vidalia is City of Vidalia, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and I'm an old time politician, and I have a hard time doing computers and face link and all that, and I, I have Sherry Rabb, who's my marketing director and public relations director, has done all that for me. But uh, you know, I, I can't say again, words to conscribe uh, how these efforts have been successful. Uh, you know, I feel comfortable, Colonel. Uh, well, let me back up a little bit. I, I hadn't had much sleep lately, and you don't during these events, but I feel comfortable whatever takes place in the spring and from here on in the future, the Corps will be there along with all these agencies. So again, I'm going to open it up to mayors and let them make a statement. I'll start with the Mayor Estes, from, who drove two and a half hours, ladies and gentlemen, to be here today. Mayor Estes. First off, I, as well as Mayor Copeland has stated, we would like to give thanks to all of those who are involved, especially our core levy boards and all that make sure our mainline levy is protecting us during these times. A lot of people that may not understand what the levy is there for, these are the times that shows what it's there for. And we'd just like to say thank you for all of those who play a part in this because now as we talked about all the phone calls and the concerned citizens that you have to answer your phone all through the night, uh, we can tell them rest assured that we have the Corps, Levy Board, and all other emergency management people in behind us making sure that we are going to be safe. If not, and there's a problem, they will keep us abreast of what's going on. So again, I'd just like to say thank you to all of you uh, that have been a part in helping us to make sure our towns and all are safe. Good afternoon, how y'all doing? My name is Eric Simmons, I'm the mayor of the city of Greenville, and Greenville survived the epic flood of 2011. In five years since the flood, the levy board and the core have been very instrumental in making major improvements to the levy. And I, on behalf of the citizens of the city of Greenville, I would like to thank them for their level of support. Uh, we also would like to thank the level of support for this organization and also our local, state, and federal leaders in helping us with these major disasters and events. You know, in 44 other states, everybody trying to get the jackball hit. Our residents and citizens in our towns want the water to drop. And so there is some good news. They may not get the jackball, but we have the good news and the water dropping, and we'd like to thank the cooperation of this organization and the organizations, particularly with the state, uh, who have uh, given of themselves to make sure our residents feel safe. There have been no major issues to date, and we hope and pray for the next three to four months that there will be no major issues affecting our residents. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon. Mayor Paxton, branch of the great city of Tallulah, just right across the bridge. I tell you, I stand before you really just to say that I am appreciative of the collaboration of this group that we have as well as the core. We're here to work together and it's evidence that we are truly working together because if we look back at the 2011, things have truly changed. The collaboration, the togetherness, however you want to put it, has made it better for us all. And I'm here just to stand strong and let them know that, hey, it may not be affecting me totally, but I'm here just as so for the other parishes or the other counties along this Mississippi River because we are one. We're working together to make sure that we take care of all of our constituents. Again, thank you all for everything. Again, I want to thank my colleagues for joining me here in Vicksburg, Mississippi, and for the organization for having such a press conference. It's my understanding that we are open up questions and first from the phone. Mm -hmm. All participants are muted. All participants are unmuted. 
Okay, there's no question from... Now we can ask questions. Uh, this is Kane with the Associated Press, and uh, Kane Bredow with the Associated Press in New Orleans. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. All right, very good. Um, the line was a little bit, uh, I couldn't hear the beginning of, uh, of some of some what the mayor, uh, Mayor Flags, I guess, uh, was saying. Um, you said something about a... I think a flood wall or maybe a temporary flood wall that had been erected along the uh, the riverfront. Is that correct? The line no, no. like I said, not very well, I'm clear not when correct I, you were speaking. It. Well, there is a flood wall uh, that is permanent along the Mississippi River, uh, basically okay. uh, here in Vicksburg, and there are certain areas in which we have to put temporary gates up so that it can become a permanent wall uh, for the um, protection and to contain the water uh, into the river. And uh, that's what we had to prepare. There's about seven of them. Uh, and uh, we prepared those, but the wall is best to, uh, along the Mississippi River, at least in Vicksburg, it's a permanent wall. Okay, yeah, that's right. Okay. Like I said, it was not clear. The other thing I wanted to ask you, if I can, is um, can you tell me what the status is of the Yazoo and Mississippi Valley Railroad Depot Museum? Is, um, is that... Yeah, is there any? Is it facing any potential flooding, or you it's, think it's going to be uh, okay? Oh no, absolutely not. Thanks to the help of the Corps of Engineers, we were able to come up with a today modernized design where we use uh, sandbag and pumps uh, that we didn't use the last time because I'm told that the water got about five feet the last time in it. Uh, because of his, uh, his historical and significant of Vicksburg, uh, we was able to uh, get the Corps to give us a design pattern of how to effectively uh, stack the, the sandbag. And from the community, even high school uh, students uh, came over and showed us how to do it. And I think it was a pyramid-type style, and I'm, I'm told that it would hold. We also have a pump uh, so that the water that comes up uh, through the basement and through the uh, drainage will be able to be pumped out and back into the river very timely. It has two levels on it, and it's a very uh, uh, effective pump. Thanks to the Corps of Engineers, they uh, uh, solicited these items for us, and they came and uh, gave us the supervision that we needed. And I think we're in great shape with our, our museum. All right, thanks. I have no further questions. Okay. That's the last question on the phone. Any other? No, ask for more questions on the phone. Are there any other questions on the phone? By phone. <laughs> Got another? No. If not, I would like to inject this because the colonel said something this morning that in the briefing was very significant. The power or the important tool of social media and how uh, there was some website that, that you can go to and like us. Uh, Rick, you want to talk to that? That's available out there. It's the Vicksburg District Corps of Engineers uh, website. That's it. Okay. Is there any other websites out there that we may want to link to for any additional All of information? The city and towns are following us as well. Great. Okay. The city Valley Division. It also has, what we're trying to do is post pictures from the front lines every day so that people can see what's going on on the front lines of the uh, of the flood fight. Right. And I think through social media, we've been able to uh, keep everybody informed. And at the same time, we went beyond that. We sent police officers door to door to about 100 residents north of Vicksburg and 41 south to put pamphlets and to get contact information with them, uh, where they're going to be displaced, if they displaced, where they're going to live, and et cetera. So uh, to this day, I'm old fashioned, but young. Uh, that I knock on wood because I think that, that we hadn't been able to report any interest, uh, interest or any, any accident at all at this point. And again, uh, I know it's important to uh, a lot of folks. Uh, we was able this time to uh, implement uh, procedures to make certain that the animals and pet was also moved to high ground or to a protected uh, place because I got a lot of phone calls on about what we was going to do with the pets. So we was able to do that. Okay? Are there any other questions? Mayor, 
May I say yes. I've forgotten something just a few moments ago. It's very important. I, I want to thank uh, 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 Chairman Massengale of DRA for sending the staff down here. They've been a tremendous asset to us. I also want to thank my co-chairman, uh, Mayor uh, Chris uh, uh, Coleman from Minneapolis, who, uh, of course, is fighting the upper Mississippi River. We're fighting the lower Mississippi. But uh, I just want to recognize them and the job they've done with us also. And again, uh, uh, the Vicksburg Respond team will meet again uh, uh, Monday at 2 o'clock, Wednesday of next week at 2 o'clock, and Friday of next week. Uh, and that's to coincide with the crest to do any assessment or evaluation as we go. Uh, the good news is that we had planned on running all through the weekend, uh, but because of uh, our uh, prepar uh, preparation, we was able to uh, uh, to reschedule that down to about three days. But uh, again, uh, we thank you for coming. We certainly. Director. Oh, yes. Our Executive Director, Colin, we thank you for uh, putting this on. Uh, he is the Executive Director for the Cities and Town Initial Organization and has been on the ground uh, from day one uh, throughout the uh, cities along the Mississippi River. And I think it starts in Missouri and goes down. Yeah, um, started in Grafton, followed all the way down to New Orleans. Right. And our next meeting, uh, organization meeting, will be in Washington, D.C. What dates? March 1st through the 3rd. And that's when we go up and talk to our congress congressional delegation. And uh, I'm going to go with a little uh, different uh, bag because uh, as we prepare, we learn. And I would hope that we can get some funds to modernize uh, how you put up a temporary floodgate. And when we go to Washington, we want to encourage our Congress to fully fund and support the Mississippi River and Tributaries Project so that the levee repairs and updates can be completed as soon as possible. Okay. Is that it, Colin? Yeah, unless the media in the room have questions. Uh, any other questions for the media? Yes. Mayor, we, we had talked about that. I've heard this uh, before earlier. Uh, you mentioned that this may be running in through the spring, through April and May. Uh, is some, can either you or someone from the Corps kind of explain that a little bit as to what that's supposed to uh, what that's supposed to mean, or we would look at continued high water? Uh, Colonel, somebody. Uh, here. We have uh, Bill Frederick with the National yes, Weather Service. Weather Service coming. Okay. okay. Excuse me, I didn't get the question. He wanted to know. Uh, about what you said in the briefing about how this may affect us going into the uh, spring and summer months. Okay. Yes, uh, right now we're in El Nino, a strong El Nino. It's supposed to continue into the, uh, over the next couple months and transition to, um, excuse me, the neutral phase in, uh, in the, in the springtime. Uh, we're looking at above, uh, record flooding right now for this time of year and we're expecting el nino conditions generally are heavier rains along the coast uh through the winter months and then they continue uh into spring all the way up into st louis above normal uh precip and as we get into the springtime so as of right now we're looking at above normal uh risk of spring flooding across the mississippi valley bill Say your name spelled for him. Bill Frederick, F R E D E R I C K. And your position. And I'm at the uh, meteorologist, uh, National Weather Service, and I'm contracted by the Corps of Engineers working at the Mississippi Valley Division. On the of course. And I do want to recognize a, uh, a a uh, colleague of mine, when I was in the, in the Mississippi legislature, she's Senator Carter from the state of Louisiana. Senator Carter, thank you for being here. And, and, and you're serving now, too, right? You're still serving, right? Yeah, yeah from, uh, from the New Orleans area. She's, she's a very powerful senator, I want to make. Well, stand up. Yes, sir. And she wants that power. <laughs> yeah, yeah she, uh, she's very knowledgeable, and she's here to assist us on any type of... Uh, Respond for uh, uh, reimbursement or anything as relates to MEMA, FEMA, or any other disaster. So we really thank you for coming to Vicksburg for that. Okay, if there are no more questions, I guess uh, 
Uh, that's it. Collectively, you can talk to any of my colleagues individually.